with these recent talks of Fedora proposing telemetry for Workstation 40, I'm genuinely surprised by how split the discussion is. Maybe it was just my corner of Linux, but I distinctly recall a few years back the general consensus being telemetry equals bad. Doesn't matter if it's anonymized data, it doesn't matter if the system is completely open, especially if it's opt out or on by default. But maybe things are slowly starting to change. Let me know your thoughts. With that being said, opt in telemetry and asking users for feedback may not work in practice. Basically making the case that if you're going to do telemetry, it should be on by default, opt in telemetry is pretty much worse than useless and you're better off just not having telemetry full stop. Fully commit or don't do it. I don't fully agree with this blog post, but it's always nice to see some different perspectives. Now, there are absolutely issues with bad actors selling data, proprietary systems collecting things that they say they're not collecting, opt-outs that don't work or turn themselves back on. Windows, for example, and developers taking the metrics and then blindly following what they say and making changes that really annoy a lot of users and all manner of completely legitimate issues. And maybe all of that deserves its own separate video, but for the sake of this discussion, all of that is being put to the side and we're assuming an open source system that works exactly like the user would expect. It only collects data that you personally feel comfortable with and it's being operated by people that are acting in good faith. Now before we can talk about telemetry, we need to agree on some definitions. When we say telemetry, what do we actually mean? As it says in the blog post, telemetry is used to gather data on the use and performance of applications and application components e.g. how often features are used, measurements of startup time and processing time, hardware, application crashes, and general usage statistics and or user behavior. In some cases, very detailed data are reported like individual window metrics, counts of use features, and individual function timings. And there is three main ways to collect data. Firstly, is asking the users. This is generally not considered telemetry. This is things like surveys, forums, some messaging room, an issue or a bug tracker, bug reporting, and things like this. The telemetry is firstly opt-in telemetry, where the system is disabled by default and the users must choose to enable it. And secondly, opt-out telemetry, where the system is enabled by default and users must choose to disable it. The primary issue with opt-in telemetry is it's very prone to inaccurate and biased data, typically biased towards your more enthusiast class of users. So Skelly uses the example of GNOME InfoCollect. This is an optional package that you would install if you're a GNOME user that would collect various things about your system. This is something you had to choose to install and would not be installed by default with GNOME. With this, it collects things like the distro you're using, the hardware manufacturer of your computer, things like desktop configuration, like the workspaces you're using, your sharing features, the online accounts you've connected, and all of this other stuff that may or may not be useful metrics depending on what you're trying to do. Now, most of the data looks pretty reasonable. For example, with the hardware manufacturers, Lenovo is at the top, Dell is second, Asus is third, HP, MSI, Gigabyte, Acer. All of these are massive brands, and it makes sense why they would be on the list. Maybe the order is a little bit off, but all of these are companies that make sense. There's not like System76 all the way at the top. And some of the other things, like people using workspaces on primary versus dynamic workspaces, the amount of sharing features being used, the number of shell extensions that people have installed, and also the kinds of shell extensions that people are using. App Indicator, GS Connect, User Theme, Dash to Dock, and all of these are really popular extensions. But looking at the distro numbers gives a whole different perspective on the data. Fedora Linux is 54% of the respondents. This is three times the next largest group being Arch Linux, which is almost twice the size of Ubuntu. Now, anybody who knows anything about Linux knows these numbers don't make any sense. There is no world 
where Arch Linux is more popular than Ubuntu, and there's probably no world where Ubuntu is less popular than Fedora. Unless you're an enthusiast GNOME user. If you want that pure GNOME experience, you're going to use Fedora. And Arch Linux is generally more enthusiast class users anyway, so that's going to have a lot more people who are going to be involved in this data collection. And Ubuntu is probably just on this list by sheer size of the distro. In the end though, they only got 2,500 respondents. There is a lot more people using GNOME. The consensus seems to be that Ubuntu is the most used Linux distribution. Ubuntu Desktop ships with GNOME, just like Fedora Workstation, which means the majority of GNOME users are actually Ubuntu users, not Fedora Linux users, or especially Arch Linux users. In this case, Fedora Linux and Arch Linux users would be considered as vocal minorities, as there are more participants than Ubuntu despite having less overall users. Vocal minorities and enthusiasts are not representative of the entire user base, especially in the context of software designed for less technical users, which is what GNOME is aiming to be. These data can be harmful, as they are often inaccurate and unrepresentative, especially in user interface and user experience research. These data can skew the opinions and conclusions of developers and designers, which could exclusively benefit vocal minorities, but harm their target audience. Now this isn't mentioned in the blog post, but I don't think there's anything wrong with hearing from the vocal minority, hearing from the enthusiast. But there are other means by which you can get that data. That's where things like issue trackers and bug reporting and surveys and things like that are going to be really good. Because those people are the only ones who are going to get involved with it. But as a general understanding of what your normal, typical users are doing, this is not going to help you. The problem with the enthusiast is they generally have a workflow that works around the problems in a system. The way they use a system is not going to be representative of the way a typical person does. Think, for example, back to Mr. LTT nuking his Pop! OS install. Most of us will see what is going on with the package manager and think, hmm, maybe let's not do yes and delete everything on my system. But Linus was not the only person who ran across that problem. A bunch of other people reported the exact same issue. Even if you're fairly new to Linux, if you go out of your way to learn how your system all pieces together, if you go and watch YouTube videos from DistroTube, from the Linux experiment, from, you know, some Australian guy ranting in his bedroom, you are in that like 1% enthusiast group of users who are really involved in their system. You're not someone who just has a Linux environment set up that maybe you don't even manage. It's just there to do some work. You do your work and when you're done working, you go back to your other system. I think Skelly's next two points are considerably weaker. Undiscoverable for less technical users. For opt-in telemetry, they are often so obscured that users will rarely discover them. Once again, these are typically enabled by vocal minorities and enthusiasts like myself, which may result in biased results. For example, on Mozilla Thunderbird, to enable telemetry, we go through the hamburger menu, settings, privacy and security, then scroll all the way down to Thunderbird data collection and use. I only discovered it because I felt like exploring the settings. And in GNOME's case, there was this whole extra package to download. But to find out the package even existed, they announced it on things like their discourse and Twitter. And if you're in the discourse forum or you're following the Twitter, you are very much one of those enthusiast users. This I don't think is inherently a problem with opt-in telemetry. I think this is a problem with open source projects having bad design and these individual projects not really caring that much about the data. Take Fedora's new system. I know this is going to be opt out, but just follow along with what I'm saying. So in this case, Fedora thinks the data is incredibly valuable and is going to massively improve the system. So as you're going through the installer, you are directly presented with the telemetry. There's no going through other menus, there's no digging around, there's no Google searching. It is right there, right in your face. But what about a project that places little value on this data, or is happy to collect any small amount they're possibly going to get? Well, in this case, there's not going to be that much focus put in to making the data collection easy. It's going to be something that's sort of on the back burner. If someone decides to go and improve it, hey, that's great. But it's not a major priority of the project. 
But I will agree with the conclusion that in a situation where the data collection is a mess, you're probably only going to get the enthusiasts involved with it. Now, there is a way to get the attention of users without just fixing your software. What you can do is aggressively shift focus to ask for feedback. A common tactic to ask users for feedback, and the most effective one I know of, is by displaying pop-ups, banners, notifications, or other forms of behavior that will shift users' focus. For example, LibreOffice sometimes asks for feedback using a banner. When you're in the middle of using an app or are prompted to shift your focus onto something that is completely unrelated to your intended goal, then you will likely do everything you can to get rid of it. If there is a do not show again button, then you'll likely press that so it doesn't annoy you again. Now, the LibreOffice case is actually really interesting because in this case, they are not asking you for feedback. This is a really terrible prompt. Help us make LibreOffice even better. Get involved. What am I getting involved with? Do you want money? Do you want bug reports? Do you want developer support? I have no idea. I'm busy right now. I have five seconds of time to give you. That is all you are going to get. Pop-ups like this need to take a lot of inspiration from a programming portfolio. If you send your portfolio to some company, that company is probably gonna have a lot of applicants and they have very little time to look at each of the applicants. If you make someone go to a website and then go to another website and download this and install that, your application is just going in the bin. Get to the point, stop wasting my time. Going back to my point from earlier, LibreOffice doesn't really care if you go and click this button. If they did, this would say something like, donate to support LibreOffice, provide telemetry to support LibreOffice, report bugs to help at LibreOffice, something along those lines. And this is even more true when we're not just talking about telemetry, but talking about something that might take five or 10 minutes of your time, like a survey. Many users may not have the time or mood to participate in surveys for whatever reason, myself included, myself as well. As pointed out previously, when you open an app, you open it to use it, not to participate in a project. I maintain and contribute to several projects, play video games with friends, spend time with family. Many of us have jobs and chores to do additionally. We may not always feel like spending time filling up a survey as we're already exhausted and have very little time to spare. At that time, personally, even if it takes five minutes, I prefer to participate properly in the right mood, provide useful information, and answer questions correctly. But this mood rarely happens to me, so I rarely participate in surveys. Now, if a survey is forced onto me, say it's a survey from a business, they're like, you have to do this survey. Usually what I do is just click whatever the first option is, and then with any like, write a thing, write some text here. I just press my spacebar key and that's usually enough to let me submit it. But that data is completely useless. And with an individual, that's not that big of a deal. But if you have a lot of entries like that, it can really start to skew the data and actively harm the data set. It can make something that seems like it is a problem, like it's not a problem, something that isn't a problem, to be a problem, and everything in between. With all that being said, opt-out telemetry, despite its controversies, addresses those problems by including everybody by default, including less technical users, as opposed to opt-in telemetry and asking users. This means that less technical users' data have more potential to influence the data into results that projects can use as a reference and form educated conclusions and tailor their software around their target audience and the majority of the user base. But it does have the opposite problem, where the enthusiast users who don't like telemetry are going to opt themselves out of the data set. This is probably less of an issue. It's probably better to have a good understanding of your normal user rather than just having a good understanding of your enthusiast and exceptional users. And those enthusiast users can be contacted through other means like bug trackers, forums, surveys, and things like that. But if someone really, really doesn't like data collection, they wouldn't be in opt-in or opt-out telemetry anyway, so they're not really part of the main issue. Personally, I'm not a fan of opt-out telemetry. I know you can opt out, and I know this data can be incredibly valuable to developers, but I just don't like the idea that without my express permission, an application is going to collect my data. Now I'm well aware I use a lot of things that have opt-out telemetry, but that doesn't mean I have to like it. 
So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Where do you stand on telemetry? Are you a developer? Do you think this data is actually valuable? Or do you think that some developers just want to collect data for the sake of it? I would love to know. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Uh, if you like the video, go like the video. And if you <laughs> really like the video, want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out my channel, subscribe to the link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and... After how many videos, I still can't do my outro properly.